Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Fireborn, and uh, today I'm giving you guys a guide on how to get speedrunning, how to get set up speedrunning <laughs> all at night. Already botched the intro, we'll see how the rest goes. Uh, so this video is going to be all about setup. It's going to be about installing things, it's going to be about figuring out how the software and stuff that we use works. It's not going to be about doing the run itself. So if you want that, then go to another video, but you'll want to do this stuff at some point. So I figure just get it out of the way at the beginning. And that way, you know, you can learn more effectively because you'll have the tools that you need. Uh, you're going to need to pause the video sometimes because I want to go through things quickly and I'm not going to wait for you to install stuff like sit here for 30 minutes while something down patches. Uh, just pause the video and come back to it when you're done the step. Uh, the description, you can actually expand that. Most people don't know that. There's going to be, you know, information there that should be useful. <laughs> um, so if you need to skip a section, there's going to be a timestamp that you can click. And each section is going to have its own like links and information that you might need to copy and paste. So just be aware of that. Um, and you know, if you have a problem, <clears throat> try and fix it on your own first, but uh, you can come to the Hollow Knight Discord and go to the speedrunning chat and just make sure you're clear and give details about what your issue is. Don't just say, you know, I've got a problem. Explain your problem first, okay? And uh, blue names, so if you're a speedrunner, you can get a blue name but you actually have to submit a run to speedrun.com before you can get the role, okay? You can't just get the speedrunning name, the blue role, uh, just by asking. <laughs> you have to submit a run, then ask, okay? And you can just ask in the speedrunning chat once you've done that. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna talk about selecting a category. You might already know which category you want to run, and if that's the case, then just go into the description and skip, okay? So, category names describe two things. It's the required objectives of the run, as well as what glitches we're using. Now, 1xx% might be a bit confusing to some people. There's going to be three main types of 1xx%. There's 100%, 106%. At 112 percent and it's really just about getting the most completion percentage possible on a specific content patch okay so you can't play 112 percent or you can't play the god master patch and just get 100 percent and skip 12 percent you have to get the maximum amount of percent possible that means not skipping any percent on the content patch that you're on okay now I'm just going to be talking about NMG 1xx% because that's all that I know anything about. And the one that people recommend the most is 106%. And that's because it has like all the optimizations, uh, because 100% is like a bit laggy at times, just because of the patch it's played on. It doesn't have like a lot of the performance optimizations that later patches have. Um, and it's also got the cool speedrunning glitches, and the route is just more fun, in my opinion. 112% um, is lacking a lot of those glitches, but if you want to do the Pantheons, then 112% might be your thing. Now, it's very punishing, but it's also pretty cool to end with Pantheons, so... You know, if you want to, if you want to risk, you know, losing 30 minutes at the end of your run, then that makes you feel like a badass, then that's that might be your thing, okay? And the nice thing about 112% is you don't have to down patch because it's played on current patch. That's nice. Um, now, the level of glitches, uh, we're, we're mainly going to talk about NMG and all glitches because in LDG, not many people are running it right now. Um, so, what's a, no ma what's a major glitch? Uh, it's just totally arbitrary, honestly. The community just votes and we decide whether something's a major glitch. Now, obviously, we try to stick to 
you know, a meaning of major that's actually making sense. Uh, major glitches we usually say are like stuff like out of bounds, invincibility, flying around, stuff like that. Whereas minor glitches we allow, okay? So it's not glitchless. There's no glitchless in Hollow Knight. If you want to run glitchless, you can, but no one's going to run it with you because some of the glitches are like really add a lot of quality of life to the game, okay? Stuff like inventory dropping makes movement way cooler. Uh, there's stuff like Balder insta kill, so you just instantly kill one of the Balders, and it's really nice because the Balders suck. Everyone hates them. Um, and then all glitches, okay? All glitches, you know, pretty straightforward based off the name. There's no arbitrary decision on what's major and minor. It's just you use all the glitches, okay? Um, and that includes stuff like super slides, which, which make you fly really quickly in one direction. Uh, rim duping, so like overlaying rims on top of each other. And uh, you get like multiple enemies and multiple items in the same room. <clears throat> and storage out of bounds. Okay, storage out of bounds. It lets you go out of bounds. I'll, I'll show it in a little bit, but that's all you really need to know. You can jump around to the outside of a room and just kind of like navigate to a different transition in the room by going along the outer box of the room. That makes sense. Um, one of the downsides of all glitches is that not many people run it, so it's there's less resources to learn from. There's less people to talk with it, or to, to talk with you about it. So it's going to be harder to learn, and it's also really punishing. But, you know, if you want to, if you're the kind of person who really likes to figure things out, then, you know, NMG might not be your thing because a lot of it is already figured out because so many people have run NMG that, you know, people know what to do in every single room. They know all the, like, movement, all the, like, spots, like, the, uh, inputs you need to hit, whereas <clears throat> all glitches is going to be less figured out, in a sense. Uh, and it kind of depends on which all glitches category you're looking at as well. Uh, and the other thing is it needs a load extender mod, so uh, loads need to be long enough for you to do certain glitches, and uh, yeah, most people are going to need to use that mod, otherwise you can't do some of the glitches, which kind of sucks, but you know, it is how it is. So I'm going to be going on to the speedrun.com leaderboards to show you a few things. Um, when you open them, this is what you're going to see. So the objectives are at the top and the level of glitches are also here. Uh, so if you want to look at some of the runs, you can see each of the submissions. <clears throat> One thing you want to look at probably is how many people are doing runs recently because that might influence your decision a bit like if people are doing runs then you're going to be able to talk with those people about the runs that they did okay so it's just like it's going to be more of a community and uh it's going to be more people to ask questions of um like some of these categories not many people are running but maybe in the future that'll change. And maybe you want a category that people haven't been running lately because you want to be able to figure things out for yourself. Maybe that's like more interesting to you. So if that's the case, then you might want like 106% all glitches. No one's run it. So maybe you can be the first person. Um, Maybe there's a reason why people aren't running the category, so you might want to ask first, but yeah. Um, and just like when you're deciding on which categories to run, you might want to check out a video. So uh, checking out like just the world record VOD, pretty helpful and you can skip through the video and see like, oh, this dude's flying around and that's pretty cool, or maybe you hate it, but you can get a good idea of whether you'll like the run or not. You can see he's using Dash Master, which is pretty cool. This is one of the few categories which actually uses Dash Master, which is awesome. Um, 
You can see storage out of bounds. Let me just show that off. Opens the menu while he's in a transition and closes it before. Oh, let me skip back a bit. He closes the menu before he enters the room. So that gives him control of the character before he enters the room. And then he can just stay out of bounds. And he falls down to another transition. You can't even see anything, but you know, some people might like that. Some people won't, but you know, to each their own. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's look at the individual levels. So um, you know, if you're a lot of people are into pantheons or like white palace, you go into the level leaderboard. You can check out those runs. You can also, just like take a look at the vods. Wants us at the top of the lot, a lot of these. <clears throat> and there's also like White Palace and Coliseum. And there's the category extensions. Okay. These are all of the meme runs. Most of these runs are pretty awful and are just done for comedic value. So I wouldn't recommend them, but if you really want to do them, uh, it's an option. Again, would not recommend it, but. They are, they, they exist. Uh, and yeah, once you've decided on which category to run and you're through with all of these steps, you can look up guides on speedrun.com and you know, just look for your category and hopefully there's something, there might not be, but if you've picked one of the more popular categories, then you'll be able to find something here. Resources doesn't really have too much, but there's a couple things you can download, like save files. Most of these are really old, like, I don't know how old this is, but it's been there for quite some time, and I don't even want to download it because I'm never going to use it. And the, uh, the load extender mod is also here, it's going to be in the description as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Yeah, let's go back into this. And we're going to talk about down patching, okay? Because down patching for the vast majority of categories is something you need to do. Uh, now, when you go into speedrun.com, you can check out the patch column for the category that you've chosen, and it'll show you the patch that everyone's playing on. Um, now, any percent NMG uses 1221. Most NMG categories use 1221, so that's probably the patch you'll be getting. Most people most people play an M any percent NMG or all skills NMG to start with, but you know, you can choose whichever one interests you most. That's what I always recommend. But you know, let's say you want to play any percent NMG, but you want to do it on current patch because you really hate the idea of down patching. You can filter runs on speedrun.com and just look for 1432. Okay. And that'll show you current patch, and this is the fastest time on current patch. <clears throat> and you can look at the video and just see what they do differently. Um, but, you know, if you're on all glitches, the patch might be 1028, okay? So that's the patch you'd want to get if you're running any percent all glitches. So once you've figured that out, you're either going to be down patching with Steam or GOG. If you have both, use the GOG method because it's much easier, okay? So the way you do it with Steam is you're going to want to open the run menu. You do that, there's going to be a Windows key on most keyboards. If there is, then you can hold that and hit R, and that'll open the run menu. Doesn't? If that hotkey doesn't work, then click the Start Menu button, and then just type in Run, or type it into Search, and it should pop up. And once you get to it, you want to go to you want to enter in this steam nav console uh, with the appropriate colons and forward slashes and then hit OK. OK. And you're going to open up a blank steam console. Now, 
Once you get this, you want to go into the description and find the download depot code for the patch that you've chosen. Okay. You're on 1221, find the 1221 download depot code, and then copy and paste the entire thing. It should look just like this. And then hit enter. Okay, now this is the most annoying part of probably everything that you'll do in terms of setup. Uh, because it's going to start downloading the depot and uh, it'll give you a message at the start and that's all the feedback it'll give you until the download depot finishes. You're gonna get like a lot of random text which means absolutely nothing like lizard mode. <clears throat> what the hell does lizard mode mean? I have no idea but it'll pop up in the window for some reason and it's also going to hide the depot download complete message after it pops up. So you're gonna need to wait for the depot download complete message. You have to be 100% sure that you've seen it. Um, and it's gonna be hidden amongst all these random messages, but you have to make sure you find it, okay? And it's gonna take like probably at least a half hour for this process to finish. Um, you might get a depot download error and if that's the case make sure you have enough space on the hard drive or just uh, yeah you can just try again if you get one of those errors and hopefully it works if not try the discord okay um, and there is a way actually to um, make sure that uh, Steam is still continuing to download, and that's you want to open up the task manager by hitting Control Shift Escape, and that's on Windows 10, so hopefully that works on everything else. And you can go to Performance and Open Resource Monitor, and then uh, go into Network, and you should see Steam within one of these tabs, and it'll show you if Steam is sending and receiving data. And that's all you need to know. As long as it's uh, moving data around, then it's working. So just leave it. And uh, you, you need to wait until, until you see the depot download complete message anyway. Okay, That's just for reassurance if you're thinking that it just like stopped working for some reason. Just wait for the message honestly though. Okay. Now, once it's completed, let me actually go back for a second. You're gonna see the depot download complete message and it's gonna point you to a directory. Okay, you're gonna wanna go to that directory, okay? And once you get there, you'll see the Hollow Knight data folder and the executable file. Okay, now create a new directory in a spot of your choosing. Okay, this is where your uh, new installations are going to go. And just make a new directory within that directory and call it Hollow Knight uh, patch name. So Hollow Knight 1221, create that or whichever patch that you've down patched to. And just drag the folder and the executable into that new folder that you've made. Okay. Now the next thing you're going to want to do, and Make sure you're careful, like this is straightforward, but you have to do this exactly or it's not going to work. So you want to open the run menu and enter notepad. Uh, if you know how to open notepad, otherwise you can just do it that way. Uh, but all you have to do is enter in 367520. Don't enter in anything else and then click file, save as. And when you get this window that pops up uh, to determine where you're saving it to, make sure it's save as file type .txt, and then the file name is just steam underscore app ID, okay, and there might be a .txt at the end. Okay, but just this, okay. Don't add the .txt at the end if it's not already there. And make sure you're not set to all files here. Make sure you're set to .txt. Okay. Let me just let me just show this process. 
just to be absolutely sure that we're doing it correctly. So 367520 and file, save as, find your Hollow Knight directory, and then you're going to want to put the Steam underscore app ID. This is in the same folder as the Hollow Knight executable. Okay, you see it right here. Make sure you're set to save as type.txt and then steam underscore app ID. Okay, that's all you need to type. Don't add .txt at the end. We're just going to replace it, but it's the exact same thing as I had before. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get into GOG down patching. This is much easier, but it only offers some versions. Okay, these are the five versions that it offers. And if you need a different version, which you almost certainly won't, but if you do, then you can, you need to use Steam to get it, okay? Uh, the first step is gonna be installing GOG Galaxy, which is really straightforward. You can just do that on your own. And uh, so once you get that set up and you set, you link your accounts to Galaxy, then uh, make sure that GOG is selected for Hollow Knight. So you wanna right click on Hollow Knight. If you have it on multiple stores, you might have a GOG version and a Steam version, if you're like me. I don't know why I have both versions, but I do. <laughs> Make sure GOG is selected, okay? You actually have to install the game too, uh, because you have to install it and then down patch it. I don't know why you have to do it like that, but you do. So the next step is just click on Hollow Knight in the library to access the page and once you get there make sure it's installed you'll see a play button afterwards and then go to this button and click manage installation configure uh, installation you'll get this window and then go to show more versions and it'll list the versions most of them that you need okay and then you just click on it click on the version that you want and click OK and it'll download and that's all you have to do with GOG Okay, now you're, you're probably going to have a uh, current patch saved and you're going to have a down patch version of the game. So you want to back up your save files so that you don't accidentally open it and end up corrupting some data or stuff like that. So you can just open up your run menu again and go to app data or percent app data percent, sorry. And uh, once you do that, You'll uh, just click OK and go to, you'll get sent to a roaming folder. <clears throat> you want to navigate back one directory to an app data folder. And then you'll have these three folders here, local, local, low, and roaming. Go into local, low, and uh, you'll find a team cherry folder there. And then hollow Knight. And uh, within the hollow Knight folder, there's going to be a bunch of .dat files. The ones you want are user1, user2, user3, and user4. And that just corresponds to user1 being the top file and user4 being the bottom save file. And you can copy those files and just paste them somewhere else. You can just make a new folder uh, within the uh, save file folder and just name it save file backups and throw them in there. This is also where, like, if you download some saves, this is where you'd paste them. Just overwrite whichever user 1, user 2, user 3, user 4 that you choose. Okay. Uh, now at this point, once you have your downpatched installation, you want to test everything. Because we're going to be installing some mods, and if the mods don't work, we want to know whether the issue was the downpatched installation or the mods, not just installing the mods and not knowing what the issue is exactly, okay? So to test, what we're gonna do is we're going to open the executable of the uh, down patch version that you installed and go into the main menu and you wanna look for the patch version, okay? If it's current patch, it's probably an issue with steam underscore app ID dot txt. If that's the case, if you're opening the game and getting current patch when you shouldn't, uh, look for the .txt file uh, in the description and just download it and try replacing 
the steam underscore app ID txt that uh, you made. Just try replacing it with the file that I provide and see if maybe you saved it incorrectly. Okay. And uh, after you check the patch version, load up a new file. You can just make a new game save and uh, make sure you can get in game. Okay. And if you can, good. Uh, if you can't, then you might want to check your depot download and try downloading it again. And if that doesn't work, then uh, come to the speedrunning channel and ask for help. Okay, I'm gonna take a swig of water in one second. <clears throat> okay, so Next step is going to be creating a practice installation. So this is going to be taking the down patch version of the game and copying it and pasting it and just adding some mods that will let us practice much easier. So take the uh, GOG installation folder, which will look uh, like on the right and go back one folder and copy and paste the folder just so you have an extra copy of it. Same with Hollow Knight 1221 for Steam. Like if you did the Steam down patching, just copy and paste that folder and then add debug to the end of the folder so that it's labeled properly. Okay. <clears throat> now the first step is going to be downloading modding API. Now uh, different versions of modding API exist depending on both which store you bought it from as well as which patch it's for, okay? And really old versions don't have modding APIs, so you'll have to install debug mod a little bit differently. <clears throat> so if available, you're gonna wanna use the universal version, okay? And when you go into the Google Drive for modding API, it's gonna look like this, okay? Um, so universal, I see that, and I'm gonna use this version. So just right click it, download. That's for patch 1432. So what if you're on 1221? Then you'd look uh, for Windows if you're using the Steam version, GOG if you're using the GOG version, then Mac and Linux. So just choose which one you want to download and uh, download it. Okay, now back to the PowerPoint. Uh, once you've downloaded the zip file, navigate to it and right click open with and Windows Explorer. Okay, And you're going to see the Hollow Knight data folder in the readme. You can follow the instructions in the readme if you're confused, but all you really have to do is take the Hollow Knight data folder and just copy it, just drag it into the folder with the Hollow Knight executable in it. So go into the Hollow Knight 1221 debug or whatever it's called and just drag in Hollow Knight data so that the files within the Hollow Knight data folder get moved into the new installation. Okay. Get asked to replace any files, say yes. Now you want to open the game at this point and just make sure that you see modding API at the top, you're not gonna see debug mod yet. If it's installed correctly, then you'll see this in the top left with the main menu. <clears throat> now, next step is debug menu mod, uh, more commonly just called debug mod. But uh, So these three patches are going to install something a little bit different. Uh, 1028, it's gonna use mini debug, which doesn't come with a UI and you're, you're going to need to look up the hotkeys. I'll have a list of them in the description. Uh, it also has save states, so don't worry about that. Uh, 1221 and 1432 uh, use a save state DLL file, and save states are super useful, but not all patches have it. So if you're on a different patch than those three that are listed, you're going to have to go into the Google Drive and find debug mod for that patch, okay? Uh, and to install it, you're going to want to go into 
the debug installation folder, and then Hollow Knight data, and then managed, and then mods, okay? And put the DLL file within that mods folder, okay? Should be debug mod.dll just as shown here. You can see in the bottom left, we're in the mods folder, debug mod.dll is there. <laughs> Very straightforward. Um, mini debug, so for 1028, you're going to need to replace assembly c sharp.dll within the manage folder. So you want to go here instead and just replace that DLL file. <laughs> and you're not going to be able to see it in the menu like so, but it should be working. And you can tell just by going into a game and, well, testing the hockeys. Okay, so adding Steam shortcuts, this is totally optional, but you might want to add these shortcuts into your Steam library. If so, uh, just go into Steam and click add a game in the bottom left and you can go to uh, you can click browse and you want to navigate to the exe file or the down patch version so like in hollow knight 1221 add this hollow knight, hollow underscore knight and then uh click ok and you're going to click add selected programs Okay, now you're going to need to ins uh, search your library for hollow underscore night because that's what's going to get added and you're going to want to right click on that and go to properties and then uh, within the window that pops up <clears throat> you change the top value of hollow underscore night you want to change it to like hollow night patch name or hollow night patch name debug and you can just repeat the process for any other uh, installations that you have. Okay, so we're gonna skip the FAQ for now and we're going to go into looking at how to use debug mod because that is super important. So let's just load up this save file. Now this is what it's gonna look like when you open your first file with the game okay uh, now <clears throat> you might lose these menus at some point you can just hit F1 to show all menus or hide all menus and the way you interact with these menus is pausing and you can click on them okay there's also a binds section here which we'll get to in a moment but you see there's a lot of options if you click hide menu then you're gonna need to hit F1 to get it back there's cheats so infinite soul HP these are all really useful for practicing. Uh, you can give yourself all the charms and charm notches just by clicking on this. All skills, you can edit which skills you have. Now some of these are incremental, so you need to click Mothwing Cloak, so I have nothing right now. Now I have Mothwing Cloak, now I have Mothwing Cloak and Shade Cloak. Now I have nothing, okay? Or you can just click all skills and give yourself everything. Um, items also work a bit differently, so you can see there's like Pale Ore, Simple Keys, Rancid Eggs, Geo, and Essence. So if you click it, then you're going to get 1000 Geo, or 100 Essence. You can just spam click it to give yourself a bunch. Then there's stuff like the Flower, you can give yourself that if you want it for some reason. Uh, for practicing Flower Quest, I guess. <clears throat> or to show off in the challenge runs. Uh, and you can give yourself like lantern and, and all that other stuff too. Uh, bosses, the option to respawn bosses is really nice. Keep in mind like most of this stuff you can hockey as well so you don't need to have to go into the menu. <clears throat> respawn ghost is for like dream warriors if you want to practice those. Uh, now one of the most important and valuable options is the dream gate menu. So I don't have any dream gate set right now because I literally just made the save file. But I do have essence and I gave myself dream gate. So now I can set a dream gate using one of these presets that I've made. You're not, yours is not going to look like this when you start because I have a dream gate file made up uh, specifically for any percent MMG. So I have all the 
splits and spots that I want to practice. Now you might be wondering, okay, how do I make my own bots? Like, how do I make my own save file like this? Okay, you want to go to add item, and it's going to add this location that I'm at at this moment. Okay, now if I go over here and dream gate, nothing's going to happen because I haven't set my dream gate to the location. Okay, it's only saving the location. It's not actually giving me the dream gate location to the character. So I have to click this and now my save file is set to that dream gate location and I can dream gate like five feet to the left. Very useful. Okay. And that's all you really need to know. In order to get the names, you actually have to go into the dreamgate.dat file in the uh, Night directory and you have to edit the names manually. <laughs> Just kind of a pain in the ass, but now, once you have a, a list the way you want it, you want to click on save data, and that saves this list, okay? Also delete items, just click delete and delete it. Now, if you uh, change your dreamgate.dat file manually, then you want to use this read data option so it updates the list, okay? Now that's, uh, I'm gonna go to a boss so I can actually show you uh, let's go to Gura's mother, because she dies very quickly. Herself's everything, just cause. <clears throat> and I'll show you how to uh, basically just practice. Now the main way to respawn a boss is uh, by using save states. So let's go over binds really quickly. So once you open up the menu and pause, you'll have this binds menu. Now there's a ton of hotkeys. You don't have to memorize them all because you're not going to be using the vast majority of them. Set respawn, not as useful as it seems because your respawn point, uh, hazard respawn, as we say, uh, constantly changes whenever you uh, move around the room. The save state buttons are what you really want to use. So I have mine set to make a save state on nine and load a save state on seven. You want to set this and you just click the white button and hit the button you want to change it to. And it's going to, it'll tell you if it's overriding something else, okay? And advance through the pages here. So you, there might be buttons that you hit by accident that change things. And you can figure out how to change them back by going through these binds. <clears throat> What are some other important ones? Uh, these are pretty valuable. I have these set to just letters on the keyboard. Uh, you want soul, HP, invincibility, and no clip all to be set somewhere. You don't really need infinite jump because that's covered with no clip. Or anything else? Not really. So that's all you really need to set. It's just those four cheats and making and saving, uh, making and loading save states. Now I get to a point where, uh, you know, I want to practice. So uh, normally I'll come in here with a certain amount of soul, right? If I give myself infinite soul and then I take it away and that'll just give me full soul. I can cast a fireball or two just to emulate having that much soul in that spot. <clears throat> and say I want to practice quick killing Gruz mother and wow I killed him so before this I actually made a safe state so instead of having to respawn the boss and re-enter the room I'm just gonna load my safe state and we're back okay you can see how valuable this is gonna be for practicing <clears throat> now there are some restrictions to safe states Okay, there's some things you really shouldn't do because it's a little bit glitchy. Now, um, the first thing is don't load a save state unless you've already made one. Otherwise, your game is going to so uh, soft block and you're going to need to close the game completely in order to get out of the soft lock. But don't load save states. Don't load save states while you're dying because you're going to. Uh, load the save state and then it's going to finish 
killing you and then you're gonna load somewhere else <clears throat> um there, also another thing is you can't uh you can't uh make a save state during a boss and then load the state it's just gonna load with the boss you know at the beginning of the fight so if i start fighting Gra's mother and then i make a save state like so and i load it boss is just gonna be you know where it was at the start okay because it's just loading the room and taking some data uh, it's not going to be taking the data, the data of you know, what the boss is doing at that specific point because I guess it's you know too much work and people probably won't even use it. Uh, what else do we need to look at? Okay, there's a lot of information here which you're probably not going to use. You can also make the game go slower by decreasing and increasing time scale. It's not super useful. I wouldn't really tr use that for practicing, just maybe for trying QGA to make sure it works, I don't know. <laughs> but generally not something you need to pay too much attention to. Okay. And I think that covers like the basics. If you're having problems with save state, just, you know, it's going to be consistent, so pay attention to why something broke and don't do it again because i'm pretty sure i'm missing at least one thing about different ways that safe state can like mess things up but it's pretty straightforward and you can always ask questions if you're not sure <clears throat> yeah i think that's it so next thing we're going to be getting into is live split now, live split, uh, it's gonna, you're gonna just install it on your own, and once you open it, you're going to get, let me just close this PowerPoint for a second, um, you're gonna get, okay, and with this window, you can uh, right click it to get a bunch of options. Now, the first thing you're want, gonna want to do is go to settings and set some hotkeys uh, so reset split you're going to be using that a lot but you're also going to be using start split sometimes too so make sure to set those to hotkeys that you'll remember uh, undo and skip split can also be useful sometimes so having those set to some easy keys is helpful pause um, Switch comparisons, this happens by accident a lot, and then people are confused why their comparisons are messed up. So just like, at least be aware of what keys those are on. Toggle global hotkeys, don't bother binding this, just click the check mark so you're sure that it's on. And that just makes sure that you can control live split even when it's minimized. Like even when you're in the game, you can still hit the hotkeys and it'll Take those into account instead of having to like click on the live split window and then you know start split that would not work out very well so um <clears throat> yeah next thing with live split you want to right click it and look at this compare against tab okay by default it's going to be set to i think best segment and real time you want to make sure it's set to personal best for most people, you, you'll prefer that. Also make sure it's set to game time. Okay, now we have a load list timer with Hollow Knight so that whenever the game's loading, it doesn't continue the timer. Okay, the timer pauses during loads. If your timer's not pausing during loads, it's probably because you're set to real time. Okay, so make sure this is set to game time. Okay, next thing we're gonna look at is the split editor. So open this up. And uh, first thing you're going to want to do is set the game name to Hollow Knight. Okay, you don't have to click this, but just making sure it's spelled right. As soon as you enter this, this is going to pop up. The uh, auto splitter and load remover. If it doesn't pop up, then make sure Live Split is able to access the internet. Because that's the main reason why it wouldn't pop up. Uh, now you can type in the run category. It can just be whatever you want to type in. 
<clears throat> and the main thing we're doing with the splits editor is just adding splits. So let's say I want to add Ventral Spirit and then Mothwing Cloak. Sorry if the keyboard's super loud. Uh, and once we have the splits that we want, we'll just add this for demonstration. This would be a very weird run, but uh, once we have the splits that we want, we're going to need to add auto splits. Okay. Now you might think we add three auto splits, but we actually add two. And what this does is normally when you use live split, you hit a button and you might know this from like console runs, you hit a button and it goes to the next split. But with Hollow Knight, we don't do that. Everything is done automatically. So you get Vengeful Spirit and the auto splitter splits automatically <laughs> as implied by the name. And this is how you make sure that a split happens. And a split just refers to like one of these things. So what you're telling here, the live split here is when you get Vengeful Spirit split, go to the next split. So it doesn't really matter which order it's in. You can do it like this. Cloak first. When you get Mothwing Cloak, it's going to go to the next split. Okay, the order doesn't really matter. But having it ordered is nice. So, you know, you can double check things. Now, auto splits also happen when the run ends. Okay, don't hit a split button when the run ends because then your time's not going to be valid because there's a specific time when the run begins and when the run ends. And the auto splitter takes care of that. Don't start anything or end anything manually. Uh, so the Hollow Knight split, there is like a Hollow Knight split in here, like Hollow Knight Dream Nail. If you're confused about that, that's for when you start the Radiance fight by Dream Nailing Hollow Knight. So you don't want that. <laughs> Unless you're doing true ending or something that involves going to radiance. If you're doing any percent, then you just leave it like this. It'll split when you get Vengeful Spirit. It'll split when you get Mothwing Cloak. And then when you kill Hollow Knight and end the game, it'll finish off the run. Okay? That's all you need to do. Now, if you're wondering, like, which splits do I add in the splits editor? then uh, you're going to want to go into, like, just check speedrun.com leaderboards and uh, go to one of the, like, you can just go to the world record and see what splits they use. And having similar splits to other people is useful because you have a way to compare the times that you get versus, you know, the other runners. Okay, so you want to you wanna have the same splits as everyone else. And also when there's a community sum of best page, so like the best times for each individual split, you can also potentially compete in the future. Okay. Um, one second. <clears throat> the one other thing you can do is you can add comparison. Um, and this is like if you have goal splits, like if you have a goal time to get then you'd use this, or if you want to compare against world record, then you do this. So you'll have to manually enter the times that world record got in each split. So let's say like 329, and then like 839, <clears throat> then 3307, I think it is. Oops. I think that's hours. Whatever. Just enter in the times <laughs> enter in the times manually. And uh yeah. 33 hours. Perfect. Uh and then you have your splits. And that's all you really need to do for that. Uh so next thing you're wanna gonna want to do is go to edit layout. And we can add in some stuff to make this look like not just a timer. Most people use a detailed timer instead of a regular timer. 
and this will show the split times as long as well as your overall times okay so the time of the current split that you're on most people also add a list of the splits so you can see there's three splits and a bunch of blank space because I haven't added many splits yet I might want to like, uh, you might want to double click on splits and uh, reduce the number of total splits to how many splits I have and if I have a lot of splits then I might want to let it scroll through the splits instead so if I'm doing like 106 percent then I might want to just do like 10 total splits shown and then it'll just scroll through it'll show one upcoming split and just the rest like all the last eight splits that I've done you can also just like go through this and fancy it up you can choose to show decimal places or uh, the different numbers um, and you can also add a column so if you did that uh, world record comparison before you might want to add a column and move it to the left and then say like world record and comparison world record so this will give you a comparison of your time in this run versus world record okay that's all you really have to do for that uh, now other things you might want to add are a title and you can just drag this to the top and double click on that to change and you can make you know cosmetic adjustments to it as well as selecting different options if you so choose. Uh, other common things that people add are some of the best, and this is just like a listing of all the best uh, times. And it's just like, it's all your best times in each split combined together. So it's like the best possible run you can get assuming you don't beat any of your best times for each split. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is best possible time and how do you do that again I think there's some like convoluted way to get this um, possible time save well I, I forget how to get best possible time sorry guys I'll add it in the description if I figure out how but like that's all the main things that you need to know there's also one other thing that people sometimes do which is adding a separate timer for real time um it can get like a bit too much information really quickly but to do that you create a new timer and instead of current timing method which should be game time you go to real time that'll show both a real time timer as well as an in-game timer and because we're <laughs> because we've got a decel timer it'll also show the split timer yeah and uh, yeah now I've got Hollow Knight open and live splits open and that's a problem okay so I'm gonna save these splits really quickly just wherever because this is for demonstration purposes and you have to open up live split after you're at the main menu of Hollow Knight, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna run into problems like it might not start automatically. If you have that issue, then maybe try, uh, well, make sure you've already opened Live Split after being in the menu. And you might also try right clicking Live Split running as administrator, okay? Now, Live Split is open. Um, now, I have OBS set up in a funny way, but if you start the game, then you're going to see, um, let me just skip through this. Sorry for the deafening keyboard noises, but you can see it automatically started. I did not, you know, hit any button or anything to make it start. And if I give myself, um, Vengeful Spirit, um, maybe it doesn't work with debug mod. Okay, it did work. <laughs> I was a bit confused because, yeah, anyway. 
As soon as you get the ability, get auto splits. Okay. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now I'm going to stop that. And we're going to get into talking about OBS. Now, OBS is the software that we use to record everything. I'm just going to mute these so I don't see the bars distracting me. <laughs> uh, so, the first, like when you install OBS, this you should get a window pretty much like this. If you are missing anything, then you can go to view and just, uh, you can turn things on and off here. Um, you can also set a profile, like if you want to have profiles for streaming and also for like YouTube, like doing offline runs, you want it to be higher quality or whatever, and you can set those up here. You just make a new file and then you start making changes. Now, <clears throat> uh, first thing you want to do is go into settings and there's a bunch of settings we're going to need to change. Okay. So stream is the first thing you'll want to go to assuming you're streaming if not then don't go here <laughs> uh, so you can set up twitch and you can also connect your account that's just gonna ask you to log in and once you've done that you're connected that's all we really need to say uh, output so outputs going to be um, all of the settings related to like your video quality and stuff uh, so here you're going to want to, the first thing you want to look at is output mode. Go to advanced actually, uh, just so we can select the right encoder. Uh, so there's two different encoders that you can use. Well, there's three, but there's two that we want to look at. One is this uh, NVIDIA new. This is one that uh, is more taxing for your graphics card. Uh, whereas X264 is more taxing for your CPU. So if you have a really good graphics card, but not a very good CPU, then you want to use this. If you have a really crap graphics card and a really good CPU, then you're going to want to use this. Otherwise, just try out both of them and see like if either of them has like any, it's causing any problems with the game running slowly, then you might want to try the other one. Okay. I always use this one because I have a decent GPU and CPU, so I'd rather just tax my GPU and make sure that the CPU, uh, so that the game has enough you know, CPU resources to make use of, because that's going to cause a lot of lag otherwise, potentially. Now bitrate is the next thing you want to look at, but in order to figure out which bitrate to use, uh, we're going to want to look at an internet speed test, so you can just Google that and run the speed test. And it's going to take a second. <clears throat> so, that's the download. That's not the number we're going to be using. But the upload is here. Okay. Now, this is going to be like the maximum amount that you can upload. 14 mbps. So I'm going to convert that to kilobits per second. Just like type in this. And oh, 14 megabits per second <laughs> equals 14,000 kilobits per second. Wow. Uh, and once you get that, you know I can upload at 14,000 <laughs> kilobits per second. Not something you want to do because people are going to be forced to download that amount. And some people don't have internet connections that can handle downloading that amount of kilobits per second. And Twitch is capped at 6,000 anyway. The thing is that when you're a new Twitch streamer, you don't actually have quality options for the most part. So if you set it to 6,000 and someone's computer can't handle 6,000 or someone's like on mobile or something, then that's going to be too much and they're not going to be able to watch your stream. And you don't really need that high of a bitrate anyway, because it's not like we're, you know, doing an IRL footage thing where, you know, the camera's like super shaky and stuff. It's just speedrunning, so you don't really need like a super high bitrate. For some games, you totally might, but not for Hollow Knight. Um, 
And the bitrate also depends on uh, what kind of resolution you're using. So if you want to use like 1080p and 60 FPS, then I recommend trying something at like 3500 bitrate, assuming your speeds are high enough to support that. Uh, if you did the test and said you you know you have 2,000 kilobits per second, then guess what? You're limited to you can't go above 2,000 kilobits per second. Okay, you might want to do multiple tests just to make sure you can't go above that. And uh, you also want to give yourself some wiggle room. So if it says my max upload rate is 2,000, then you might want to go to like 1,500. <laughs> okay, and that's going to be kind of low quality. So you'll want to make some adjustments to the resolution. Okay. Um, now you want you want to make sure this is set to constant bit rate because that's I think that's the only thing that Twitch supports and. Uh, you're going to be doing local recordings as well, probably. Uh, I recommend doing so. I set this to MKV, I believe, and uh, I'm not sure how much it matters, but that's what I use. Uh, so set this recording path to somewhere that works for you. It might be a different hard drive uh, or just a different file path, but that's where your recordings go, so you can change that. Don't need to change anything else anywhere. Otherwise, same with audio, you can leave that all as basic as long as there's no issues. Now, this might be a bit confusing. So, the base resolution should be set to the resolution of your desktop, which is probably 1080p. If you're on a laptop, it might be 720p. So, just be aware of that. And the output resolution is going to be the resolution of your stream or video. So um, if you have a high bitrate, if you're running at like 3500, then you can do 1080p. Just be wary that some people might not be able to run it, but you know most people can run 1080p video nowadays. So you can do 1080p. Uh, if your bitrate is like a bit lower, like 2500, don't do 1080p, do 720p, okay, like this. Uh, either way, uh, I try to get a 60 FPS video because lower quality 60 FPS is preferable for most people. So, like for speed running anyway. So, um, definitely try and get 60 FPS no matter what. And you can test and play around with bitrate and stuff just to make sure it works. Yeah, these are these are the settings that I use, and it produces like a pretty good quality video. Uh, so in hockey's, you might want to set a few of these. Uh, you can just like look through and see what's useful. But the only ones you really need are just like a microphone mute, mute button, like when mom comes into the room to give you trouble. Definitely want to mute that mic. Okay, now you can just sit, hit apply and. So next thing is uh, just making a new scene, okay? So a new scene, you just make one by clicking the plus button here, and then you'll get a blank scene. Uh, so sources, these are just the sources of video. They can also be like images and stuff, or even websites. You wanna click on plus and add some sources so you so you don't just have, you know, a blank screen. Uh, and for example, game capture. Now if you have game capture on, it's not going to capture your desktop. So you don't have to worry about people seeing your, you know, super top secret files or whatever. You can just uh, create a new game capture. And it'll, by default, it'll capture any full screen application. But I like to make sure it just sticks to Hollow Knight. All I have to do is click OK, like that, and Hollow Knight pops up. And that's all you need to stream the game. But <laughs> we're speedrunning, so we also want to make sure a live split is being picked up too. So click on the plus button, window capture, and then make a new window capture source. And you can see your windows here. 
I'm gonna go to live split and click OK. Live split's gonna pop up. Now, something I made a bit of a mistake with with live split was some of the uh, background is not the same. Uh, not exactly sure why Mothwing Cloak is gray, but the others are not. Okay, so you just want to go to splits and make sure it's all plain. And what this will let you do is you can make it transparent. Okay. Now, not everyone likes this. Some people just prefer to make their game capture smaller and then have live split on the side. That's totally up to you. If you're running at a lower quality, then it might be better to go like this because having live split transparent on top of things can make the live split text super blurry. But if you're running at like higher quality, that's not really a big deal. So you want to go to live split and window capture for live or you want to go to OBS and go to window capture for live split and right click and hit filters, then add a color key. Okay, and then uh, color key type, yes. I forgot how to do it for a second. So go to select color and then uh, pick screen color. Okay, now you'll see this is the screen color of live split. Um, we're going into a new part of the OST array. And you can just capture the color of the background of live split. Okay, and then once you've done that, click OK. And it's going to get rid of the background. Now you want to make sure the background isn't colors that are shared by the by the text or anything else on live split. Otherwise, that'll also be made transparent. Okay, that's done. You just click OK, and you've got transparent live split. Now there's separator lines, which make it look kind of dumb, but you can figure out how to get rid of those pretty easily. Uh, so we've got live split going. Now, um, other things you might want to add to this are like a video capture device, like your webcam. You can figure that out on your own, but that's how you add it. <clears throat> and one thing that I want to show off is Gamepad Viewer. So you can go to gamepadviewer.com uh, and if you have something hooked up, just hit a button on it. And you want to go to currently viewing player one. And it should detect the controller that you have, but if you want it to show up as something else, you can click up here and change it. You can also change the background, but that's not a big deal. So once you've got this um, recognized, you go to info here. You want to go to CLL, CLR browser installation. And you want to go to the URL generator. You can change some of the settings here, or you can just leave them. And then you want to click up top, and that'll copy it to your, uh, well, whatever. <laughs> you can tell I'm caring less and less about giving proper explanations as this video goes on. Uh, anyway, you go to plus and go to the browser source. Let's create new. Okay, all you have to do is paste the URL that you just copied uh, into here and just click OK. It'll say disconnected until you hit a button and then that's it. It'll automatically get rid of the background if you use a browser source like I did. And you can just uh, change it. Now, if you want to make this transparent, you also want to right click filters and go to color key. I think there's an opacity options, but you can just let's say you want to make it pretty transparent, go like 50%, and you can still see the game behind it. You don't need it to be like huge. Something like this size might be good. You don't even really need it at all, but it's, it can be nice to have. Some people like to have that on the screen. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it for OBS. So let's move on to uh, how to crop files. 
and that's with a program called AVI Demux. I th think I'm saying that correctly. And I accidentally closed it, so let me just open it up. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so it's very straightforward to use. And the reason why you might use this is if you're doing like offline runs and you have like a big video file like that's like three hours long and you just have you know a 30 minute run that you want to upload. So you're going to take one of those big files um, and you can just open it up and you figure out the starting point that you want. So you just browse through until you find the start of the run. So, you know, here's the start of the fight. So here's where I want to start the video. So you go to it and then you hit control and then page up and that's going to be the start. And then you go to the end. So there's there he's dead. So you go control page down and it'll show you in the bar at the bottom. And you want to go to MP4 Muxer and you're just copying the video and audio output. You're not going to be encoding it in any way. So it's going to be very quick. Uh, and then you just go to save and you can say Dung Defender and there's the video. That's it. And you upload the Dung Defender.mkv that you just made. And that goes on to, you know, probably YouTube. Uh, but I'll leave you guys to figure out how to upload a YouTube video. <laughs> it's very easy. Uh, now, pretty much the last step that I want to go over is how to upload things to speedrun.com. Okay. Now, the you can either do Twitch highlights and make sure you highlight it because that makes sure that uh, the VOD will stay forever. Or maybe not forever, but uh, you make sure that the VOD doesn't get deleted because Twitch automatically deletes things within a certain period of time. Uh, or you can link to like a YouTube video or whatever other video service you use, but we prefer Twitch or YouTube. So once you've got that, go to the uh, leaderboard page and click Submit Run. And you can pick your category here. Uh, Time without loads and time with loads. So what does that mean? So if you go to live split, your time without loads is going to be the game time, which is the main timer that you're using. So you got a 3307, that's what you enter. And time with loads, that's going to be real time. So once you get the PB, uh, you just load up the split file that you used and real time, it'll show you the split time for that PB in this column. Okay, so you wanna find the time at the very bottom that's gonna be like your real time for that run, okay? Then you enter that, might be like 33.50, okay? Now the patch that you used, you should know that. Just enter it in here, then and MG and like the level of glitches that we're using. And then the console. Uh, dates, you don't need to change. Video link, link the video here. Splits IO, don't worry about this. You can add a, dis a cute little description if you want, or you can leave it blank. And once you've done all that, you can click submit. Now, don't worry if you mess anything up here, you can actually edit the run. Don't uh, don't send the run in again. You have to go to the submission that you made and then edit it, okay? So, yeah, and if you really mess things up, you can talk to one of the moderators in Discord. Just go into the speedrunning channel and ask if you have any questions about that. So, before we finish up, I'm going to go over some more of this uh, FAQ. Because these are commonly asked questions and issues that people can have with the run. Okay, so controller or keyboard? The answer is that both are totally viable. Uh, some runners use keyboard, some runners use controller. There's like no significant clear advantage between either. 
Uh, there's some like minor advantages, but I'm not even really going to go over them because they're so minor that just, you know, use whatever is comfortable for you. Um, and as for like controller analog and D-pad, uh, I like D-pad a bit more, but honestly, like top runners, some of them use analog, some use D-pad. And I think more people are comfortable with analog. Uh, so, you know, if you're comfortable with it, then don't feel obligated to relearn something else just because, you know, another top runner uses it. Just use whatever you want. Uh, that said, if you're using a controller with a crappy D-pad, uh, maybe stick to analog, like Xbox 360 controllers, or if you're using a GameCube controller, don't use the D-pad. I highly recommend against it. Um, in either case, though, definitely switch up the key bindings. Uh, like, I think Quick Cast by default is on right bumper. Switch it to Y, okay? Uh, and switch to Dream Nail up to the right bumper because Dream Nail on Y doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and likewise, there's I don't really know the controls on keyboard, but there's probably going to be some things that you want to change. Okay, next is Chinese text. We use Chinese text because it's faster. Change it, go into the menu, and uh, click left twice on Eng after English. And it looks like this. Okay, so you can reference this slide to know that you're on the right language. Uh, and also, like, you have to click twice. If you go, <laughs> if you hit left twice on the keyboard, hitting left on the keyboard actually makes the menu go right because all a night. Anyway, uh, save files, we went over that earlier in the uh, in this lesson, <laughs> but uh, this is where you find them. You can back up your save files, you can replace save files. You just have to go to those uh, directories. Now some people might have problems with the game lagging. <laughs> I say some people, everyone will. Uh, but some people more so, and the reason is because the game runs very poorly at a low FPS. The lower your FPS, the more poorly the game is going to run. That's just a reality of all at night. If you're running at like under 100 FPS, the game's going to run really badly, and that kind of sucks. And if you have VSync on, then the game is going to run at an FPS equal to your monitor's refresh rate. So turn VSync off. It's very bad. It's way worse than you think. It makes a huge difference. A lot of people in their casual playthroughs have VSync on the entire time, and they wonder why they kind of suck at the game. <laughs> it's because of VSync. Well, it might be because of other reasons too, but VSync does not help. Okay, turn VSync off. Part of particle effects to low can also help. And if you really struggle to run the game, make sure other background processes are closed, and you can decrease your resolution if you have to. But that's like a last resort because who wants to run at a lower resolution? Uh, Okay, common issues. Okay, registry issues. Now, sometimes when you down patch, you'll get like really weird glitches, like uh, you can't get off of a bench, or you go to a shopkeeper and you try to open their inventory, and uh, it's just a blank screen, and uh, you soft lock. If you get some weird glitches like that, or massive lag, or just random crap, uh, it's recommended to delete your registry. So enter the run menu, like we've discussed before, and type in reg edit and hit OK. It'll, it'll open the registry editor. So from there, you want to go to HK current user, software, team cherry, then right click on the Hollow Knight folder and just delete it. Uh, it's not going to change too much, it's just it's going to change your menu settings only like uh, vsync like we just talked about as well as your controls are going to get deleted but that's it it's not going to delete your save files and hopefully if you delete your registry then your issues will be fixed 
<clears throat> There's also an issue with sound volume. So in the sound settings menu, you can adjust the volume of the sounds from like zero to 10. <laughs> but if you have your sound set to like two, some sounds will randomly just play at 10, regardless of what you have it set to. Um, so obviously if you have your sound set to two and that your windows volume at a normal volume so that you can hear two sound settings, well, then a sound that's being output at 10 is going to be extremely loud. So I recommend just keeping your sound setting at max in Hollow Knight and just adjust your volume in Windows instead so you're not deafening yourself constantly. <laughs> and your viewers if you're streaming. Or maybe you have fun with that, I don't know. Uh, but FPS being too high is also an issue, okay? And the reason is because the game runs at an uncapped frame rate by default. So, uh, you know, if you have an FPS of like 500, then your GPU might be like overheating. And also FPS being too high can be an issue with some glitches because they're like, you need to hit things on a certain frame. Uh, not, it, that's not exactly how it works, but like that's roughly the idea. The higher your frame rate, the more difficult some glitches will be. The utility that we normally use is RevaTuner Statistics Server. You can also turn on VSync and it'll just switch the FPS to your monitor's refresh rate. Uh, but that has like less control over the exact FPS that you end up with. So after you install the program, uh, you will want to open it and it'll give you this icon in the taskbar. Right click it and hit show. You'll get a window where you can hit add at the bottom left. You just want to add the uh, Hollow Knight EXE file, okay? Once you've done that, you can uh, set the frame rate limit, which is also in that window. I like setting it to around 300. Uh, once you start getting lower than that, you're gonna run into more stuttering and lag. <clears throat> and under 200 starts getting bad. Uh, but if you're running like all glitches or something, then multiples of 50 are what you want for super slides, apparently. I'm not an all glitches runner, so I don't really know for sure, but that's what people go with. Okay. And that is all. So make sure you check through the resources that I've listed and, uh, you know, good luck with learning the run. It's It's been like a lot of setup. I'm pretty tired because I, this is my second take. So because I realized I was recording improperly the first time. So that's fun. If I sounded really tired in the video, that's why. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, again, if you have questions, just come to the discord and make sure you've done your research beforehand but feel free to ask questions you know people would be totally willing to help you out i won't say they'd love to help you out but they'd usually be willing anyway that's it thanks guys and uh good luck have fun with hollow knight <laughs>